This video is me testing out these geometric templates I got on Amazon for $20. The entire set is very good. They were very highly reviewed and I did a lot of research before I found the best set. They also come with a plastic carrying case with a zipper that you can fit all of them into. Here you can see I'm unboxing all the templates. They also had an easy tear side, so once you started opening it you could actually tear it completely open, which I noticed part way in. Some of them opened easier than others and I found it very easy to open with a pair of scissors. The other thing to note about these is that the plastic is quite thick, although not too thick. It's just the perfect thickness. They aren't flexible, they're pretty rigid, so they could snap, so you should be a little careful with them. And the other thing I will say is that they have a slightly glowing greenish tone to them, which actually matches an old pencil I got a long time ago, which is a mechanical pencil. It seems to be the same type of plastic that almost seems to have a glow, it has a fluorescence to it. They're extremely good. I'm very happy I purchased them because I want to do things that are more Art Nouveau, Art Deco, and have the option to do geometric patterns in traditional art, so I needed to get more. I already had some good circle templates. Unfortunately, I lost and broke some of my old large French curves. I broke my largest one, so I ordered some new ones recently, and I'll do a separate video to review those. They're ever so slightly flexible, it should be said, and the other thing is they're extremely smooth. Every corner, every edge, every place that's cut out is absolutely perfectly smooth and easy to use. They also don't waste space by putting rulers on the side of a lot of them. I'll ask you to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're really enjoying my content. I decided I wanted to do a dog person for this Art Nouveau, so as you'll see, it's not going to be a human in the final picture, in case you were wondering why it didn't quite look like a normal human. Based on the angle, I end up not putting a tail on, and I'm focusing on keeping it to be a little bit on the simple side for an Art Nouveau piece, but it still gets fairly complicated with a lot of little intricate details in the end. I don't put absolutely every detail in this video. I end up inking it and adding a lot of details without recording it because I didn't want the section about this to be too long. I'm working on a couple videos simultaneously right now and so there's actually some crossover between this and an older video I hadn't quite finished that I ended up painting this picture in so you'll see that on a different video. I made sure to get everything to have flowing curvy lines and I wanted to get this French curve to be used quite well for the larger sweeping shapes. But in the end, I ended up hand drawing the little ties on the belt because I found that my own curve might be better. To get matching curves on opposite sides, I flipped the ruler and geometric tools and measurements over and the um, French curves to the opposite way. These different curves here are really interesting and I find them helpful for adding different designs here. No matter what their original intended purpose is, I'm using them to do this type of art style that I really like. I made sure to get a nice center line down the middle, which got a little erased there, but it's very helpful for lining up the templates to try to make sure everything is in the right spot. It's actually pretty easy to just measure things out with a ruler and literally pull out a calculator and divide by two to make sure everything is divided and equaled out. For some of these, I just hand drew things in, but I decided it was just taking too long to film and that I didn't want to spend the whole video just on this. So in a second you'll see this cool transition I've been learning watching other people's videos to change it from barely sketched out all the way up to the finished sketched, finished inked version. There you go! I'm just showing how some of the elements I added on match up with the geometric patterns and the shapes here. Here's the finished piece painted in. You'll see that in another video as well. On the next page of the same sketchbook, I decide to use the templates to make another picture. I used the same limited color palette that will be featured in the other video, except I added one color, which is the Van Gogh turquoise blue. And for this picture, I decided that I wanted to do something that used as many different geometric shapes and parts of these templates as I possibly could without 
forcing it to look ugly or stupid in my opinion. And for example, I used different size templates here, as you can see, to make the initial shapes that were featured in the frame. I made a layered frame by using different sized ones. Here I'm trying to go over everything to get the sizes correct. As you see, I need a slightly larger ruler, so I do pull a ruler from the side so I can get the halfway part. After making the crosshairs on it, I'm able to find the center line so that the geometric elements I'm creating are lined up to the center. I didn't make sure everything was absolutely perfect, but it's quite good. It's easy to line things up. Although I didn't make sure every single measurement was absolutely perfect, I kind of eyeballed it. I think it's okay if things aren't absolutely perfect as long as they're pretty good. One of the templates has a wavy line along the side that I end up using to create a wavy line as well. And I notice lots of little details that exist. Nice diamond shapes and different triangles and these interesting shell-like shapes. When it comes to different elements of this, I decided I needed another figure. They tend to be feminine figures in Art Nouveau, as well as some Art Deco inspiration, but I ended up making a mermaid so I could curve the tail behind the symbol I made on the bottom. The moon-like symbol with the series of diamonds was something I thought was too beautiful and I didn't want to cover it up, so I ended up deciding to go with a mermaid. Some of the shapes and elements on the side reminded me of shells, which made me think of mermaids more. I'm also going to add additional details as time goes on. I decided I wanted to make this one even more intricate and detailed than the last one and really go all out on the sort of Art Nouveau with a little bit of Art Deco in there as well in terms of it having more sharp edges and hard designs than pure flowing lines of Art Nouveau itself. I decided I wanted to make things very detailed and I probably could have drawn these scales in just once with the pen but I ended up penciling a bunch of them in more because I was in the mood to try to mark them off than as what was actually probably good. I did extra research in that cut there to figure out what position I wanted the arms to be in, which I had a little bit more trouble figuring out. So I came back after I'd figured out what I was going to do with the arms, I ended up deciding to put this cone shell, and I ended up deciding I wanted just the loose hand on the side. The idea is that she's going to have very long hair, and I want a little bit of the hair to go through the fingers on the side here, which is a common feature in Art Nouveau. I also tried to stylize the hair to look more flowing and Art Nouveau-like instead of focusing on making it more realistic. I've been careful about which elements in the background I'm covering up versus leaving in front of things, more for the sake of beauty of the overall composition than anything else. Overall, I'm finding these extremely high quality and I'm very happy I got them for such a low price considering their quality. Going forward, I can make many more geometric and Art Nouveau inspired pieces using these templates as very helpful things. As you can see, I did the jump cut again and inked it off camera because it would have been too long of a video if I'd also finished all the fixing inking on video. I also let it set overnight before erasing the pencil in this case and I scanned the line art for my computer. So I'll be able to keep a copy of the line art without having to worry about redoing it some other time. I added a bunch of little details in that were not caught on camera, such as some fish, and some little seaweeds on the bottom and some bubbles and extra little details around as well as making sure I had a little bit of line thickness added in there in addition. By adding in the turquoise blue to the limited color palette I was using before, I can achieve even more colors and I was basing this more on some Art Nouveau pieces I saw. The limited color palette is based on a small art hall and they were new colors at the time and are still some of my most recent colors. This includes Van Gogh paints. Van Gogh, turquoise blue, PG-15 and PG-7. Van Gogh, permanent lemon yellow, PY-184. Van Gogh, permanent red, deep, PR-149. Van Gogh, transparent yellow medium, PY-128. Van Gogh, quinacridone purple red, PV-55. Van Gogh, azo, yellow light, PY-154 and PO-16, pigment orange 16 and Van Gogh Matter Lake Light PR264 and PR254. So in this case, I'm using a limited color palette to mix these colors. It has basically three very similar redundant yellows, but these were yellows I really wanted for my collection and needed. The Permanent Red Deep and the Matter Lake Light are also extremely similar. But by using such similar colors, you're really able to see what the differences are between the colors. 
The transparent yellow medium is the one that appears darker in the pan and is absolutely very transparent. The azo yellow light, actually I think that might be pigment white six, is a little more opaque. I'd call it semi-opaque. Whereas the permanent lemon yellow is a little more opaque than that. I like different opacities of watercolors just fine, and I enjoy mixing custom colors, including pre-mixing custom colors and empty half pans, and I enjoy different things for the different qualities. I enjoy very smooth paints and very granulating paints. I just like to know the different properties and experiment and figure out what I'm doing so I have all the different colors and property options. Pigments can behave differently even if the colors look similar. As you can tell, these three yellows are not actually identical, even if they are similar. And the two reds are similar, but not identical as well, in terms of transparency and pigment properties, as well as slightly different hues. So it's really interesting to learn about these different colors. I really enjoyed adding in that turquoise blue. That really made a big difference to me, and I can now mix an awful lot of colors after adding in the turquoise blue that I simply could not at all close to reach before when I was using the other colors in a limited palette just to try them out and to restrict myself. I was somehow able to get beautiful golden brownish tones, however, which were very useful for Art Nouveau type artwork. But I think that it's really, really useful actually to take some random colors and do limited color palettes, practice doing different swatches and mixes. It's often good to take written notes, write down which paints you're using. In this case, I also have video reference, but I'm probably actually still gonna write down some notes in the sketchbook about which paints I was using in this color palette. It's often very useful to also make these notes. I've also been making circle palette notes and showing the different transitions and the way the colors work. It also helps you pick things out for making custom convenience mixes on your own later. And it helps you learn about how the colors mix to speed up your painting time in the future. As you can see, I'm mixing different colors of different tones using these mixes, and I'm adding some darker tones in to add better contrast so everything isn't too similar of a tone. In some cases, I'm impatient and keep painting when I probably should wait for parts to dry, but in most cases, I've been doing it until it needs to go dry, then coming back to it when it's dried later. This is especially important when up against the borders of a wet area with a wet area. It's better to wait for an area to completely dry, otherwise it'll flow and bleed into the wet area which is probably not what you intend a lot of the time. And here it is done. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll see you with another one very soon. Bye!